Give our love and praise to a God that we know. The name is Allah. Praise our Creator so much. So much needed, and it's good to know your God. And give an honor to all of our ancestors. They're so much a part of us, and us and around us, those that we speak of and those that we don't. But they are there for us. Give an honor to all of our divine prophets, namely Jesus, Muhammad, Buddha, and Confucius, and our most illustrious Hebrew prophet is none other than the Honorable Prophet Nobu Ali, who's truly our Savior as well as our Redeemer. And give an honor to all of the Moorish officials, all the Moorish staff, all of our members, and all the Moors in general, and everyone who's on this call this evening. Always my honor to be a part of you. Islam, 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 thank you much. Okay, my noble brothers and sisters, uh, and listen to the, the commentary from our noble brothers and sisters this evening. It's always a, a great thing to, uh, uh, to recognize and really appreciate and acknowledge those who have spoken about issues that really we need to understand ourselves about because there's so much controversy and confusion out here in society. And I wanted to just do a special presentation about the census because, you know, there's so many concerns about it. And uh, we've been dealing with this subject for several years. We were way ahead of the game, if you will. And I just want to share a couple of letters just to show the importance of what this is. And then we're going to give a breakdown on what it is that we as more should uh, submit on these census survey forms. So then back in 2005, we did some research to determine who was really behind the census and who made the determination on who and how we're classified as a people. So then check this out. And this is 2005. The Grand, Grand Chief Joe Bratton Bay Solicitor General Moore Science Temple. Dear Mr. Bratton Bay, this email is in response to yours of February 28, 2005 concerning your organization's interest and how its members are classified in the census. The Office of Management and Budget, I mean, Management and Budget, not the U.S. Census Bureau establishes the standard race categories used for all federal data collections. The most recent update to those standards was published October the 30th, 1997, and is available on the internet when they give the website. But my, the point here is that the Office of Management and Budget, not the U.S. Census Bureau, so budget and management, Establish the standard race categories used for all federal data collection. Then there's a justice file that was instituted by the Dingo Hill brothers when they met certain generals back in the 40s establishing uh, how we are to be classified in the system when they created what is called the Moorish National Bureau of Vice Statistics. They met with these generals and majors. They made a statement saying it's going to take uh, months, years, but they're going to make law out of the process and it's going to come through the Justice Department. And they did. There is a Justice Department file number that is set up, set up for us. And one of the main key letters is BM, which is mean budget and management. I'm going to stop right there. I'm going to continue with this. So I just want to add that little piece. A whole lot to this. But anyway, it says, This classification provides a minimal standard for maintaining, collecting, and presenting data on race and ethnicity for all federal reporting purposes. The categories in this classification are social political constructs and should not be interpreted as being scientific or anthropological, anthropological in nature. They are not used as determinants of eligibility for participation in any federal program. 
The standards have been developed to provide a common language for uniformity and comparability in the collection and use of data on race and ethnicity for federal agencies. The standards have five categories for data on race, which are American Indian or Alaska Native, Asian, Black or African American, Native Hawaiian or other Pacific Islander, and White. These are two categories for data on ethnicity. Hispanic or Latino and not Hispanic or Latino. In addition to documenting the revised stat, stat standards, the website listed above provides information about the process used in establishing the standards, the issues raised during that process, and links to related information. The Census Bureau and the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, parentheses NAACP, have entered a joint agreement to operate a census information center, in parentheses the CIC, at the NAACP National Office. That's where we had to go. The CIC provides access to Census Bureau data for program planning, needs assessment, policy development, analysts, and advocacy for underserved communities on a national, regional, and local level. And you see how important these two groups coming together to make a decision on how we are classified. Something to think about. The NACP and the census. They make a determination on you. So now, let's see what happened. And we met with the EEOC. This was in 1984. To let you know that uh, we've been dealing with some national business for a while. And we'll always be continuing to do that. And that's why the movement is both divine and national. But we're letting you know we've been on this page concerning our folks for a minute. So when we met with the EOC, which is the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, we gave them our paperwork to confirm our classification as not being black and we fall into the white category. Now, remember now, our prophet teaches us that white means purity. Purity means God. God means rule of the land. It's all about status. It has nothing to do with pigmentation at all. Even when this government was becoming a more perfect union at the convention of 1787 with the 35 more white men, 20 Anglo-Saxon white men. Status, not complexion. Keep that in mind. So going back to this letter from EOC, it says the furnace that did Mr. Berman be, this was a member this particular brother worked for Amtrak. He was an engineer. And once he got his paperwork from us, as we request the members to do, to submit the paperwork to your employer so they can understand who you are, how you classify, and the laws you under. He did that. Everything was fine until they got to the racial part when they saw that he was he, he marked himself in as black. Because they looking at the physical appearance, not understanding the, the status of the term white. So they had to send his paperwork to EEOC for a determination whether they can accept his reclassification. So then this is what EEOC sent back, confirming the paperwork. And this is what it's saying. The furnace documentation, that's our paperwork, 
denoting your request to change your race, ethnic designation from black to white, was forwarded to the Affirmative Action Office in Washington, D.C. by Ms. Tanya Rowe of the Baltimore Human Resource Office. The Equal Employment Opportunity Commission's guidelines establish a procedure which is based on the standards for employers to follow. Now, all the employers got to follow this procedure now because this commission established the guidelines. So now you see the significance of who's doing what and why. This publication in part states race, ethnic de- identification as follows. Race, ethnic de- uh, designations as used by the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission do not denote scientific definitions of anthropological origins. For the purposes of this report, an, an employee may be included in the group to which he or she appears to belong, identifies with, or is regarded in the community as belonging. However, no person should be counted in more than one race ethnic group. The race ethnic categories used for this survey are white not of Hispanic origin, all persons having origins in any of the original peoples of Europe, North Africa, or the Middle East. Black, not of Hispanic origin, all persons having origins in any of the black racial groups of Africa. Let's see how they playing with you now. Then it says Hispanic, all persons of Mexican, Puerto Rican, Cuban, Central or South American, or other Spanish culture or origins, regardless of race. Then it has Asian or Pacific Islander, all persons having origins in any of the original peoples of the Far East, Southeast Asia, the Indian subcontinent, or the Pacific Islands. This area includes, for example... China, Japan, Korea, the Philippines Islands, and some more. Then we come down to what is called the American Indian or Alaska Native. All persons having origins in any of the original peoples of what? North America. And who maintain cultural identification through tribal affiliation or community recognition. Then they make a determination. Now here's what they are saying. After reviewing your documentation, after reviewing your documentation and the guidelines, it is so that you can be classified in the white category. So if the paperwork wasn't valid, if it wasn't official, there's no way in the world they would have came back with this decision. Then it says, a copy of this letter will be forwarded to the Baltimore Human Resource Office. Please contact Mr. Rowe to complete the appropriate documentation to change your race to white. Until that time, your personnel records will remain unchanged. So it's up to you. Nothing going to change even until you change. Okay. So now that's a very good step in the development of what needs to take place. So now, with that, fast forwarding, we met with the NACP. We sent letters here in Baltimore because the headquarters is here also. But the national office deal with all the national businesses per se. Because the people that we met with, they go into the Congress, they meet with the president and things of this nature. So now, this was in 2015, and when we met with these people in 2015, it was regarding the 2020 census that we're getting today. So check this out, and this was November the 20th, because I asked the head person to send me a communication regarding the meetings that we had and what was agreed upon and understood. November the 20th, 2015, National Grand Sheik J. Bratton Bay. Divine and National Movement of North America Incorporated, the North American National Public, Dear Grand Chief Braddon Bay, 
thank you for your three visits to my office in Washington, D.C. and numerous phone calls to share with me your concerns regarding the 2020 census and the manner in which people of Morse ancestry can respond. Now, I'm going to stop this for a moment. Now, a lot of Morse are doing some, some lot of different processes pertaining to this census. Uh, one group out of Chicago sent me their format and I sent this letter to them and some other information to validate the fact that, hey, we need to come around the table so we can all be doing the same thing. But I'm just letting you know that we've been to the national office to get a process. Haven't heard back from these moles. So that's not going to stop us from doing what we have to do. We met with the officials about this. They wasn't there. We were. And certain things was given to us in order to finalize this survey. So let me continue. But I'm just letting you know that it's not that we didn't stretch our hands out. So we can all be saying and doing the same thing. But you know how the Moore's paradigm is with so many egos going on around. And people don't want to come to the table. But our process, we are people organization. And our concerns is about our people. And what needs to be done to rectify the wrong. So, okay, let me continue. Okay. Then the numerous phone calls to share with me your concerns regarding the 2020 census and the manner in which people of Morris ancestry can respond. As a member of the Census Bureau Task Force for the United States Census, I appreciate your input and concerns. You're consistent. I'm not one to take me. Well, we can't do this or no. I'm not going to go on that type of verbiage. Especially when I know certain things. And we were very persistent with certain uh, information that we had to give to them. And if we didn't know this policy, they would have flipped us around. But we flipped them and they respected that. Because there's no way they could run. Because we had too much documented proof to support uh, to to substantiate why we was there, the reason why we wanted to make these changes and what we wanted them to do about it. So it says, your consistent correspondence with me has been educational as well as enlightening. Because they didn't know about this policy, y'all. Y'all be surprised. They didn't know. That's why the man said it was educational and enlightening. So they didn't know. They came with the regular spill. Civil rights, this or that. You know, you know how people do. And then it says, I can assure you, I can assure you that the concerns you raise with me have been and will continue to be shared with the U.S. Census Bureau as it develops its 2020 questionnaire. That's what you all get now, this questionnaire. Survey. And you're going to get certain inserts to go along with the survey. One of them is going to deal with a code, a census ID code number. That when you fill out the form, you got to indicate this code number. And then they tell you that the reason why these census is formulated, because the census go back to 1790, that's when the first census was taken. It says that the reason why they're doing this is to direct billions of dollars in federal funds to local communities to, for schools, roads, and other public services. Help your community prepare to meet transportation and emergency red, readiness needs. Determine the number of seats each state has in the U.S. House of Representatives and your political representation at all levels of government. Isn't that something to say? Let me go back to my letter. Then it says, it is the goal of the NACP to ensure that as many people as possible are counted in the upcoming census and that the count is as accurate as possible. That being said, I know that it is the desire of the Census Bureau to be as accurate as possible in this questionnaire, while at the same time being sufficiently concise so as not to overwhelm the respondents. 
thank you again for taking the time and energy to raise your concerns with the NACP. I hope that you will find, I mean, I hope you will feel free to continue to contact me, gave me his number, with any additional questions or comments you may have been sincerely he signed off. And this is the director of NACP Washington Bureau, Senior Vice President for Policy and Advocacy. So I'm going to leave that alone. Now, when he asked for me to contact him, I told him that uh, I was going to do that to get an update. Oh, about two months ago, I called and we talked about this. And he told me, he said, Brad Bay, he said, you tell your people, they marking uh, Morse American on the form. And uh, I said, well, we got to put white. We got to mark the box. Well, he said, yeah. Because, see, that's about your status. So now, those of you had the, who have the form, I'm just going to highlight certain things. Now, on the form, when you go to the survey, you go to the first page, you know, it says start here. And then they list in certain sections. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. But then the thing is, when you go to number nine, isn't that something? Put us on the nine. That's a great thing. So on the nine, it says, what is person one's race? And person one's race is, now whoever's in that uh, that home, are you the mother or the father? Whoever the first person, you know, you got to fill out that information, you know, phone number, your name, whatever. But this one, when it says, what is person one's race? It says, mark X, one or more boxes and print origin you hear this word origin very profound so in that box where it says white you check that box white it says print for example German, Irish, English, Italian Lebanese, Egyptian ETC so we put, we mark white, because that's your status now. And Morse American goes in the line under where it says white. Morse American, because when they talk about race and origin, and then they letting you know who these nations are. So just like they English, they Irish. So we Morse, we Morse Americans. That goes there. So then when you go to the next block, it says black or African-American. Print, for example, African-American, Jamaican, Haitian, Nigerian, Ethiopian, Somali, etc. That don't apply to us. So you can put in A there. And then you go down to where it says American Indian or natives or, or Alaska natives. Now, remember, I gave you the breakdown in the uh, Census Bureau what these designations of nations represent. And then I came back and read the letter from EEOC about how we can change our racial designation from black to white. Why? Because we fall into the original peoples of North Africa and North America. We got them both ways. So that's why we white. Status. So anyway, so now they tell you, they say print name of enrolled or principal tribes, for example, Navajo Nation, Blackfeet Tribe, Mayan Aztec Native Village of Barrow, Inaput Traditional Government, uh, Name Eskimo Community, etc. Well, we bypass that. Then they got Chinese, Filipino, Asian, Indian, etc. And then they have other Asian, and this is print, for example, Pakistani. Cambodian, uh, Hong Kong, etc. Then they go. Then they have other Pacific Islander print, for example, Togon, Fujian, Marshallese, etc. So you're going to end that too. So 
from there you go to the last line dealing with number nine when it says some other race so now they don't have Asiatic and some more is when to mark a block create their own block and put Asiatic there but that ain't gonna never carry it because these things are set up to go into a system under these blocks so whatever you create is not going to take because it's not in the system that way so when it says some other race print race or origin our race is Asiatic our origin we are mobile that will solidify your race and the origin because then they can grow it it's bringing you back pertaining to your national descent nature and your genealogy so we got them in three Moorish American Asiatic mobile that completes that that's how you should I mean you can do whatever you want to do but being that the top official made reference to that term white and Moorish American that's one thing but when we get down to the last line some other race and that other, that other race was Asiatic because we all, that's why we're Asiatic because the whole continent was Asian that's why our race is Asian that's not Asian that's not in the mix so we got to write in some other race, Asiatic, or it says, or origin. Either or, but in order to capture both sides, we put our origin down, which is mobile. That's our origin. And now people say, well, how do you know that? Well, our prophet made us aware when he said in Acts 6, we go to the 15th, the Moorish Americans descendants of the ancient Moabites who inhabit the northwest and southwestern shores of the Africa. That's on this side. Northwest and South Africa is North America is upper east of the west, South America is lower east of the west. So this is Northwest and Southwest Africa on this side after the flood. So now, instead of they call it Africa, they say America. But nevertheless, we fall into the category. And that's a great thing. So now, to validate your origin, but a lot of people don't know. They just say, well, I'm a Moor. Well, how you know? A lot of people don't know. Well, the books say this and say that. But well, we got to go with scripture. Because man said nature doesn't change. So if you go into the 19th chapter of Genesis, go to around about the 37th verse. And uh, I'll read what it says. So it won't be no disputes. Because it's always good, you know, to... Uh, Go to the book and validate certain things. Uh, where is it now? And this is chapter 19 of Genesis, verse 37. And it says this. And the firstborn bare a son and called his name Moab. The same is the father of the Moabites unto this day. And I'm going to stop there. Unto this day. That's your origin. Moab was Lot's eldest son, his first son. So you see how we in the family and Lot was a Hebrew just like Abraham. So that's why you're taking it back. That's why we're Hebrew masters of Moab's descent. Coming back into the family through Ruth the Moabitess and Naomi. She was the Hebrew. Ruth was the Moabite, but her God was Shemos. They wasn't under the one God. But when she chimed back in the Naomi with Boaz, she told Naomi that her God would be hers. She left Shemos and went with the one God, and she became the Hebrew. And that's what brought us back into the families of nations again. And that's why we in grace to roof the Mobitis. Because the Creator punished us for 10 generations because we didn't help our brothers and sisters, man. Roof the Mobitis. The only numbers in Bethlehem and Judah, they had a famine. Her husband, Emelech, was sick. And she took him out of uh, Judah and traveled into Moab where Ruth was. 
kill her husband and he died in Moab. But I'm just saying how things work. So now Moab, this whole Western Hemisphere is the land of Moab. Our prophet made us very, uh, he distinguished us when he said, we descendants of the ancient Moabites who inhabited the northwest and southwestern shores of Africa. We, we were given permission by the pharaohs of Egypt to inhabit this part of the world. This was the land of our possession. Moses died here. The laws were given here. Joshua, all of that was here in the West. And the prophet says our religion is the Old Testament. I mean, the old time religion, that's the Old Testament. And 90% of the New Testament, all was on this side. It was on this side. The first Egypt was in the West. They're not going to make you aware of that. That's why the little bell is so important. It's a landmark and it's never to be moved. Just like the Pyramid of Giza sits on the 36 degree 30 in the east. That's the landmark for the east. Little bell is a landmark for the west. That's why it's never to be moved because it's an altar. So anyway, that's the spill for this evening. And, uh, I'll probably bring this back again because we got until October the 1st, I believe it is. And they tell you that they want to have these surveys in by the 1st of April. And basically that's because they want to do a count. Uh, so they like to touch in the waters because now even if you don't respond, they will send you another survey. And if you don't send it in the second time, they will send a, uh, one of the census takers to your home to get the information so they can fill out the survey because this is all about money for these states dealing with the districts and how they're going to distribute the money pertaining to the people in those particular districts. That's what this is all about. And the thing is, for, you know, for our people, so-called black folks, see, I was told that our people must be very exact in their origin. And how can our people be exact in their origin when they don't know self? So that's going to be the kicker. And they looking at all of that. But the man did say, tell me, tell your people to put in a Moorish American. You see, because I asked them, how come you don't have a second that says more? Well, see, they don't want to raise our consciousness like that. And he told me that, well, say, you know, you're right. But we got to get the numbers. Dealing with this whole black thing. So it's more to it, but I just want to add that little piece. And uh, it's a whole lot coming down the pike, good people. A whole, whole lot coming down this year. A whole lot of people going to jail. People that you didn't think were doing things, but they ain't. A lot of indictments coming down the pike. You're going to be surprised. Oprah's all up in it. Oh, yeah, and a whole lot of them. Trump going to be cleaning house. So anyway, good people, uh, that's, that's my demonstration for the night. I'm looking at the time, it's at 10 o'clock, a good hour to end. And as always, uh, we want to invite you all to come back. Because look, we need each other, we really do. Especially the way things are in society. And as our prophet teaches us, together we stand, the body we fall, and you can see for us not being unified in our conviction of truth, we're going to have a problem. But see, there's one thing we can say about this organization. We are registered properly and the government has confirmed our processes. They have, because now you know you can't get no more uh, 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 passports. They shut that down. So a lot of things going to be coming down the pike, as I said. So we better get prepared because we ain't seen the worst yet. Believe that. So, in closing, my good people, always loving, can't help but bring it forth. Because every time I say the word Allah, it's a real good sensation that flows to my every fiber of my body. And that's why it's so good to know your God because your ancestors are all around you. You don't see them, but they're there. You just need to tap into them. Talk to them. Talk to your plants. Talk to your animals. 
they can pick up your vibration. Because we all are one. We all are part of the part. But we are so blessed. Because our God loved us by sending us our prophets. To bring us back into life. Because we were dead. All praises to Allah. For sending us in our prophets. To send, for sending us our honorable prophets. The Hebrew prophets. Noble Jews Allah. Thank you all so much. Loving you much. Be peaceful. And don't fret. Allah got this as long as you have Allah in you. To do what is necessary for him to bring his energy through you. For the betterment of humanity. Islam. Thank you much. Peace. Islam. And thank you for summarizing our call like you always do. And appreciate you much for that beautiful demonstration, National Grand Sheik of the Morris Science Temple, the Divine and National Movement of North America Incorporated, number 13, the Morris American National Republic, is none other than National Grand Sheik Joel Bratton Bay. And we definitely appreciate you much, always. I appreciate you for all you have done, you haven't done, and what you will do. Thank you, Mo. And likewise, love you, man. Righty. Love you much, National Grand. Well, Islam, my good people, we have came to that time. Uh, we have uh, we have uh, almost 60 lines on the call. We definitely like to thank you for your presence and your energies, and come back and see us again next week around the same, the same time, same space, and we'll be here. Well, Islam. My